What's up, everybody? I'm the Goju Ryu philosopher, and like almost every student of a Goju Ryu offshoot, except perhaps Kyokushin and Ishin Ryu, which explicitly added outside influences from Shodokan and Shoren Ryu respectively, I've always practiced the 12 core kata of Goju Ryu. Leaving aside the Gekisai kata, two basic forms created specifically to introduce younger students to karate without needing to teach them the whole complex syllabus, these kata are Sanshin and Tensho, plus Saifa, Seiyunshin, Shisoshin, Sanseru, Sepai, Seisan, Kururunfa, and Superempei, which is sometimes also called Peichurin. Depending on your lineage and dojo, you might learn these in any of a few different ways, and there might also be additional kata, like Shurekan's Gekiha and Kakuha series, or the Genbu and Byako katas that were added by Yagi Meitoku, or even a few katas pulled from other styles, like Pasai or Rohai. But if you practice Goju, these kata are your fundamental forms, the kata that make up the syllabus of all Goju Ryu practice. Most of these kata, however, were not the same as those that Miyagi himself learned from his teacher, Higaona Kanryo. What katas Higaona Sensei taught aren't clearly recorded, but we can reconstruct his likely syllabus, and therefore determine which katas Miyagi Chojun learned from him, by taking a look at his other student, Kyoda Juhatsu. Kyoda Sensei, another one of Higaona's long term students, didn't continue his training with Miyagi Sensei like Higaseiko did, but rather moved to a different city and founded the style of To On Ryu, whose name comes from the Onyomi, or Chinese inspired readings, of the first two characters of Higaona Sensei's name. The kata that this style has in common with Goju are Sanshin, Seisan, Sanseru, and Betchurin, or Superempe. Outside of these, he also taught Yabu Kensu's version of Jion kata and the kata Nepai, which he learned from Gokenki, in addition to two other kata that seem to be his original creations. Also, the Toon Ryu website, which is now a beautiful Japanese language website, credits Higaona Kanryu, Kanryu's older brother, with being the origin of his version of Seisan. This means that, of the core kata that us Goju practitioners take for granted today, only Sanshin, Sanseru, Superempe, and maybe Seisan are the original Nahate katas. So where did the rest of our syllabus come from? And why are some of the most important kata in Goju Ryu, some of which include my favorites, so different from these original four? And where did they come from if it wasn't from Nahate and the Whooping Crane style? This episode of History of Goju Ryu, we're going to be looking into the kata that Miyagi added to the syllabus. Let's get into it. The easiest kata's history to track is Tensho kata, since it was created specifically by Miyagi Chojun Sensei. While the Gekisai kata were developed as Kihon kata, so that beginners could get the sequence and flow of a kata without needing to spend three years on practicing it, Tensho was created as a soft complement to the breathing techniques and Qigong-like style of Sanshin kata. While the characters used to write Tensho nowadays are taken to mean rotating palms, Many sources claim that the original form was known as Rokishu. The origins of this form are much harder to be sure of, as are the appropriate kanji to use for spelling it, which I've seen as Rokishu and Rokishu. For several reasons that I'll cover outside of this series, the kanji spelling of kanta isn't super important, but moreover, no one whose research that I can find agrees on the origin of Rokishu outside of it generally originating somewhere in China. The most likely hypothesis, in my opinion, of the ones that I can find is that whatever form or maybe even simple exercise became Tensho likely passed through the dojo of the Kojo family, a school in Fuzhou where almost every Okinawan transfer student spent at least a few years training. Nevertheless, the version of Tensho that we practice today as a complete kata was almost certainly compiled into its current form by Miyagi Chojun Sensei. So that leaves us with Saifa, Seiyunchin, Shisochin, Sepai, and Kururunfa as our mysteries. Miyagi Chojun Sensei made several trips to China to study Chinese martial arts from the source, much like his teacher had done a generation before him. Accompanied by his friend Gokenki, Miyagi studied from as many teachers as he could find, not necessarily limiting himself by style or lineage. Gokenki was a master of Munhe Chuen, God, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, which means whooping crane boxing, but the only forms that overlap between modern whooping crane schools and Goju Ryu are Sanshin and Sanseiru. Among the other styles that may have been studied by Miyagi Chojun Sensei, several contain techniques whose names remind us of some of these kata, such as Monk Fist Boxing, which contains number symbology reliant on the number 18, and contains several techniques that are at least reminiscent of Sepai and Kururunfa katas. Other styles, such as Bagua, Hungar, and any of the many styles that make up the Five Ancestors style, may have been the source of some of these five kata. In fact, Di Shu Chuen, 
A ground fighting style, also called dog boxing, contains many of the techniques found in Goju Ryu, as well as the forms Sumen Jen and Shuba Lianzhi, the first of which is very similar in spelling and proposed meaning to Shisojin, and the second of which might be related to Seipai. Dishu Chuen also contains San Shi Liu, which is the same in spelling and meaning as San Se. Could one of these Chinese styles be the origin of Saifa, Seiyunqin, Shisoshin, Sepai, and Kurununfa? It's very difficult to know for certain. For one, there isn't much extant evidence as to how many of these Chinese forms are performed, other than the first-hand testimonies of those who've traveled to China and scattered low-resolution video clips from 2007. <laughs> may not even be the case that Miyagi learned these forms in China, or that they come from a single style at all. As likely, if not more so, is that some or all of these kata consist of elements borrowed and recontextualized by Miyagi himself, taking elements that he learned from Chinese martial arts or some of his fellow Okinawan karateka and synthesizing them. After all, it is certainly the case that Miyagi-sensei created and adapted several new kata to suit his curriculum. The addition of these new kata to Goju Ryu's syllabus, whatever their origin might be, shows that Miyagi was concerned not simply with repeating the instruction that he had received, but in expanding and improving his fighting techniques. In fact, this was more than likely the norm among karateka, since karate was, and still is, a living art. Kyoda Juhatsu added several kata to his style, notably Jion and Nepai. Most of Miyagi's students also expanded on his teachings, either by creating or adopting new kata, or by cross-training and adding other styles and techniques into their instruction. Goju Ryu, and karate as a whole, is constantly evolving. Thank you for watching this video in the History of Goju Ryu series. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and leave a comment letting me know what you've added to your Goju practice. If you haven't watched the rest of this series, I recommend doing so by clicking the playlist that will pop up at the end of this video, and if you'd like to see the rest of these episodes as they come out, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss when I upload new videos. I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and remember to strive for constant and never-ending improvement.